You know, at this point, I often find myself wondering why these outlets like the Mary Sue and Polygon continue to write these types of articles. I mean, they're, they're not getting clicks from the majority of people, I wouldn't think. Anyone I talk to around the water cooler or on the internet, they haven't read half the articles I'm talking about, so it's not like they're getting ad revenue, and you can't say they click it for individuals like us as rage bait to click on and get mad at, because even if they do do that, there's no way that's a sustainable business model. There ain't enough people on YouTube or on the internet making articles that are talking in rageful manner about these garbage articles coming from, again, Polygon and Mary Sue, places like that. In this case, CBR. So welcome back to Words of Paradise. I'm your host, Leon Idol. And we're going to talk about this article from CBR that's bringing up the Resident Evil Netflix show and why it was the best Resident Evil adaptation yet. A, a, an adaptation that was canceled a year ago almost immediately due to the fact that it was maligned by both viewers and fans of the franchise. Yeah, the casual audience and the hardcore gamer like your boy here considering Resident Evil is my favorite show or sorry, my favorite video game series of all time. You might think it's weird to talk about a TV show that ended over a year ago, but any chance to talk about Resident Evil I'm gonna get and since CBR was dumb enough to provide us with this particular article, I can't help myself. Why Netflix's Resident Evil was the best Resident adaptation. First of all, it should be best Resident Evil adaptation. They can't even get their title right. So yeah, good job. I, I'm really waiting for the AI to take over your job, CBR. Netflix Resident Evil was almost universally maligned by fans of Capcom's hit zombie games, but the disdain was unfairly deserved. If it was universally maligned, then tell me why it was unfairly deserved. Like, like if everybody agrees on something, I would say 9 times out of 10, when 99% of people hold a particular opinion, that means that, that opinion is probably correct. Like, I don't know what they're going to try and do here to justify the show being a good adaptation, but I guarantee you it's just some sort of bait to put these individuals on the out group. That way, oh, we seem so much more intelligent than you. We, we know what we're talking about. We're the professionals. We're the experts, despite the fact they're writing for a dying uh, internet company, a, a dying journalistic website. So, yeah, before we get into the article, please do subscribe, check out the channel because I'm trying to get to 2,000 subscribers before the end of the year. You could really help with that. Now let's go on and have fun with this, shall we? As far as gamers were concerned, Netflix Resident Evil perpetuated the long-standing belief that video game adaptations, especially those based on Capcom's premier survival horror series Resident Evil, were all bad. And they are all bad. This Netflix show is nothing out of the ordinary. Every single version of a Resident Evil adaptation that's been done in live action has been garbage, from the Mila Jovovich, Paul W.S. Anderson films, to the terrible, terrible Welcome to Raccoon City movie from a couple years ago, to this show that is, honestly, it's Resident Evil in name only. I mean, they use the name Resident Evil, they reference the Umbrella Corporation, and they give us a race swap Wesker. And that is the extent of its similarities, if you can even call them that, with Resident Evil. So yes, they, they are all bad, like, but we'll continue. The best Netflix series got was a, was lukewarm reviews, it didn't even get that. It didn't even, hold on, hold on, let's take a look at something real quick. How you gonna call it lukewarm reviews when even the critics hated this show? Like, don't get me wrong, they liked it substantially more than the viewer, 53% uh, critic and then 26% audience, but even the critics and the audience are combined in giving it a rotten, see, top critics gave it even less, 43%, and then th there's, oh my, you're gonna call this lukewarm reviews? Nah, these were piss poor reviews, but okay, yeah, go, go with that narrative, CBR, it's not like it's beyond easy to debunk. Unsurprisingly, it was relentlessly mocked by game fans, like countless streaming exclusives that didn't break enough records in one day. Netflix Resident Evil was cancelled almost immediately after its premiere. As it should have been, there was no way this was making money. There is no- you could have made this entire show for 10 bucks and a pack of gum, and it was not going to make any money. No one was signing up to Netflix and being like, I gotta watch the new Resident Evil show, because just from the trailers alone and from all the buzz on the internet, everyone knew this was going to be a complete slap in the face to fans, and honestly, probably a, a slap in the face to general TV viewers who've come to expect some monicum of good storytelling. I mean, granted, with the boat we've been in the last five years or so, I don't know what anyone would expect that. We've all seen She-Hulk, we've all seen Ahsoka. I would argue to you that the Resident Evil adaptation on Netflix is right up there with something like Ahsoka or She-Hulk for being just the bottom of the barrel when it comes to modern day television. Roughly a year after it's unceremonious, it, it definitely was not unceremonious, but alright, and Netflix Resident Evil barely left a mark, and, and, and the mark it did leave is this crude, cruel black stain on your nice hardwood floor that is, it smells like baby vomit and Vaseline, like it's, it's an 
awful, awful mark, but the mark was left. General audiences could be forgiven for forgetting the series even existed, and gamers sporadically brought it up as a punchline. Even before, even if this were the case, there's no better time than now to revisit. No, we don't, we don't need to revisit anything. We don't need to revisit anything. We, you want to leave this when it comes to visiting. You want to leave this like you want to leave, you know, like you, like your racist uncle from you know, from down south. Hey, it's it's cool to hear about it now and again as a joke. You don't want any sort of visitation. It's just not going to end well for anyone. Uh, severely underrated video game adaptation. That's that's what they're calling an underrated guys. Again, underrated. R r really, Un even the critics gave it a 53%. How are you going to try and tell me it's underrated? I don't normally care what critics have to say, but when the critics and audience both agree, I think there's got to be some merit here. Uh, discover that it's a lot better than most people, specifically Resident Evil fans claim. Yeah, Resident Evil fans, you know, people like... Wrong arm. You know, people like me, the individuals that, you know, are paying customers that have been following this franchise since, you know, 1996, you know, or obviously it could be after that. But, uh, yeah, Resident Evil fans, we, we don't deserve uh, something good, a well-done adaptation. It's been attempted so many times. Netflix Resident Evil wasn't perfect. No shit. Netflix Resident Evil was an overlooked, wasn't an overlooked masterpiece. The series had glaring flaws, and it's easy to see why it didn't click with audiences. Its most obvious pitfall was how generic it was. I want to remind you guys, this article is called The Best, Why It's the Best Resident Evil Adaptation. It's, all, it's talking about its glaring flaws, saying it's not perfect, yet somehow this was the best adaptation. I'm going to be real. The Paul W.S. Anderson films are. Like, given everything we've gotten, the Paul W.S. Anderson films, Welcome to Raccoon City, and this, those terrible 2 out of 10 on a good day Paul W.S. Anderson films are the best Resident Evil adaptations we've gotten. Despite being based on one of the most unique and exciting takes on zombie fiction, Netflix Resident Evil was too unoriginal. The series' present timeline was a generic post-apocalypse that had too much in common with the likes of The Walking Dead or the preceding Resident Evil movies. This felty to conventions and cliches also applied to Jade Wesker's character and arc. Jade Wesker didn't have a character or an arc. Uh, Jade Wesker was just a, a pandering tokenization character thrust on screen so that you could claim, Woo, my diversity, because it's a Japanese product and you didn't want to go the Japanese route of, let's being honest, mostly having either Japanese or white characters, and you, you felt like you needed some diversity and inclusion. Yeah, Jay Wesker wasn't a character, they were a cardboard cutout given the last name of a famous character to make you try and warm up to that character artificially. Uh-uh. I, I ain't about that. Uh, the zombie survivors she fought and met, the events she found herself in, similarly, the series prelude in New Raccoon City blended too well with most modern science fiction social commentaries that confronted capitalism by deconstructing the idyllic suburban in life. Uh, can you guys make a single article without throwing shade at capitalism, considering without capitalism, you wouldn't even have, I, I get it, you get pennies for these articles, but you wouldn't even get pennies for these articles if it weren't for capitalism, because let me tell you, there ain't gonna be any wannabe video game journalism under the communist regime that you guys are after. Nah, you're gonna be out there working the fields until you die, dreaming, you're wishing, God, if I could resurrect Ronald Reagan and make him president again, that would fix all of our problems. But by, it, it, when communism does eventually take control, you will be begging for Papa Daddy Donald Trump to come back and bring all the jobs back and bring back capitalism because you miss sitting in your air conditioning on your nice $7,000 laptop probably made by Apple because you've got some strange loyalty to these you know, in, overarching companies that control the world. And you're going to be begging for capitalism to come back because, man, you miss writing articles for video games. Games. Point is, that was a long-winded way to say, quit talking about how bad capitalism is. Capitalism rocks. And you know what? Capitalism did its job right in that it didn't get this show a second season. That's how we know capitalism is working. The dark satire Black Mirror in particular came to many viewers' minds. The series' messages about megacorporations prioritizing profit over people were timely, but said nothing. What do you mean they were timely? That's always been Resident Evil's message ever since 1990 freaking 6. But said nothing new or interesting. Worst of all, Netflix Resident Evil aired during the oversaturated zombie genre's last legs. It's hard not to see its failure as proof of audiences' desire to move on from the undead. Uh-uh. I, I wager, you know, I, I offer the counter that if this show was good, it would have been fine. People are not... I, I make the same argument with superhero movies. 
People do get genre fatigue because the genre runs dry because everything is generic or bad. But when something good comes out, people love it still because it's just objectively good. So this has nothing to do about the zombie genre being on its last legs. I mean, it very well might be, but if the show was good, it could have still bucked that trend. But if newcomers left the series indifferent or unimpressed, fans were offended by it. You got damn right we were offended by it. Even if Netflix Resident Evil was a continuation of the games, fans hated the many liberties it took. They didn't like how the series told a new story starring original characters instead of following the games verbatim. Well, it, it, it didn't, first of all, use original characters. By the way, you come to find out that this version of Wesker, that's right, remember, Race Swap Black Wesker, played by Rance Reddick, who, let's, let's be real, was actually the best part of the show. Like, I, I ain't even gonna front. Lance Reddick, as Wesker, was the best part of the show. Really messed up that they race swapped the character, but good actor that did a well done, you know, did a good job. Either way, he was Wesker in name only as well. It turned out to actually even be a clone. He was playing a clone of the real Wesker. So there weren't really any characters from the games in it. I mean, you could say the real Re Wesker makes a brief appearance, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, point is, yeah, if you're going to do an adaptation of Resident Evil, you should be adapting the games. It it's a video game. Not helping matters with the series' use of comedy and family drama, which fans uh, which fans found corny. B corny, distracting, and insufferable, because that's not Resident Evil. Resident Evil is about one thing. People need get going into a situation they're unprepared for and surviving a bio uh, a B B O W is a bioorganic weapon outbreak. Like if you if you send in a group of cops into a torn apart mansion or a busted up city, and then situation ensues where they got to rely on their wits and their skills to get them out of said zombie infestation, all while uncovering a, a government and or corporate conspiracy to spread the virus. That's it. That's how you do Resident Evil. That's not what this show was. It didn't need to be a family drama that had stuff. You, you basically, you could have watched this on the CW, changed its name, and you wouldn't know it was Resident Evil related, and it would have fit right in. The new characters were also ridiculed for being too campy or downright unlikable. Fans claimed the series would have been better if it just faithfully adapted the games, which I don't know if it would have been better or not, but it would have been preferred. Netflix Resident Evil does fall short as an adaptation of a famous game series, yet... When viewed as a standalone zombie show, it was well made, well acted, and a perfectly entertaining eight episode season. I loathe this argument. Oh, you know, if, if you take if you take away the name Resident Evil, first of all, no, if you take away the name Resident Evil, this show was still crap. The acting was not good. You call it well acted. The acting was not good. Again, aside from Lance Reddick, it absolutely wasn't entertaining. You even said all these these complaints you gave up here about it being generic, about it not saying anything new. That wouldn't change if it wasn't called Resident Evil. You say perfectly entertaining eight episode season. It shouldn't have been that, according to all the complaints you had above because all those complaints weren't tied to it uh, as Resident Evil as an IP. They were just tied to it as a show. So no, this was not. You can't just sit there and be like, man, this cheeseburger sucks. You know, this doesn't taste like a cheeseburger at all. But if I look at it like a chicken sandwich, it's actually pretty good. Like, no, no, no. It's a bad cheeseburger. You shouldn't be trying to jump through hoops and find ways to justify making the cheeseburger taste good. If it's a bad cheeseburger, it's a bad cheeseburger. You don't need to be comparing to be like, ah, it's a chicken sandwich. That makes no damn sense. Netflix Resident Evil's best watch, not as an adaptation of its namesake games, but as a schlocky zombie movie that was expanded into a high-budget miniseries. Netflix Resident Evil thrived precisely because it ignored the game's canon to forge its own path. How the shit you gonna call being cancelled after like a week and a half thriving. This show didn't thrive. Everyone hated it. I will once again like to defer you to the Rotten Tomatoes score, which for once I agree with critics. In fact, I think the critics were too fucking nice to this. I think even the top critics at 43% were too nice to this. How the hell you gonna say Resident Evil, Netflix Resident Evil thrived? This is the opposite of thrive. What you're trying to do is use your own version, your own journalistic T virus to resurrect the corpse of this show and beg for a second season to bring it back like one of the zombies from its namesake and that doesn't need to happen. This was complete and utter garbage. It's been a year. How the hell are you guys not going to let this thing be dead after a year? No one wanted this. No one asked for this. Once it came out, nobody watched this. But you still think that for whatever reason, you're so intelligent that if people just give it a chance to see things through your completely 
uncritical lens, you, you, uh, the, a point of view that lacks any sort of critical thinking or objective understanding of filmmaking or TV making, that maybe it's worth it to, you know, quit trying to waste people's time and quit trying to waste studios' money. You got no idea what you're talking about. I am absolutely not going to finish this article. I don't know how much was left, but from the moment they said it works as a standalone TV show and that, uh, you know, it, it, it's fine if you don't call it Resident Evil and that it was... Uh, what was it they said? It thrived? Nah. Nah. Uh, CBR, comic book resources, never had any credibility to begin with, but they lost the plot on this one. And the reason I bring all this up, not really to complain about the article, but... What is the goal here? What is the end game? What are they trying to accomplish by putting out articles like these? Because it's not going to generate a bunch of conversation. I guarantee you this is not going to be one of my bigger videos. I'm, I'm sure my Castlevania video from a couple days ago probably going to do better. I'm sure two of my three videos from yesterday are going to do better than this one. The only people that are going to watch this are going to be people that are, you know, fans of me and my channel and want to see what I have to say. This isn't going to bring in anyone new. And if it's not going to bring in anyone new for me doing it, why is CBR thing is going to bring in anyone new? There, there's so Something going on here with these you know, journalistic companies, with these you know games journalists, that they think that there's gonna that there's an audience for this old news when everyone's moved on because all you're talking about is disposable content. I can't wait for these companies to fail. I can't wait for them to die, and I can't wait for someone to rise from the ashes and start making journalism again, if we want to call it that, that we actually care about. But those are just my opinions. Let me know yours in the comments down below, or let me know on X, where you can find me at Bolt the Word. And please do subscribe. I am a nerdy news channel. I cover nerdy news every day. Uh, not always about dead TV shows that nobody liked. Usually about breaking news. So you know, if you want to cover, uh, check out some of my videos from you know previous day, for example, about the Robin Hood fiasco or Magic the gathering possibly getting rid of two creature types for religious connotation purposes it's completely stupid then by all means have at it and also please do follow me on instagram at words of paradise underscore leon check out some of the stuff i do behind the scenes you might find something you're interested in but until next time it's all here in the nerdosphere and this has been words of paradise